feel like the lighting just doesn't look right yes, or something. It gets light. Oh, there we go. That looks better. Hey, Anna, Sean in Alaska. Hey, Mom. I saw a Walker. Walker farm in here. Oh. I can't help it. it. Does it on its own. Hello, hello. Anna, how's things looking in your garden after the storm? I mean, I watched the video, but are things starting to cover? He must be treating new steam. Oh, no. Not tonight. Not treating any things tonight. No, not at all. <laughs> I actually need to go back into them. Probably, I got one uh, in our other apiary across the, the pond that's uh that's got um a lot of bees on it. So hey, Dawn. How are you? Hey, Dawn. Hey, Sean Alaska. How are you, man? Yeah, thankfully, um, we haven't had any bee incidents recently. My hair is doing like a little pokey up thingy. I don't know what it's doing. Man, like I got rained on. Hey, our woodcutter. This afternoon, you we I went out to. We've been rained on like the last five days. Yeah, well, you got rained. Hey, Brad. On. Hey, having the homestead. I got rained on pretty heavy. I went out to the garden. Good, Sean, Alaska. Because I knew some things needed to be picked. It's just gonna have to do it. Anyway, I went out. Does, it's almost, I went out to the garden to get. I knew this. That's bothering me. I went out to the, I went out to get some stuff picked and I, cause I knew it needed to be picked and I had several squash and zucchini that were pretty, pretty big. And, um, I got about halfway done and the bottom fell out. Then I looked up and make a lemonade from lemon. Take hey, Kim. And Colby's cow was standing by the fence and I was Josie got out this morning. We have moved them from. Our video tomorrow know, talks about us if, weaning for sure. So. If y'all know where hey, fairy tale. our raised beds and greenhouse and all of that is, right behind that, we have one of the temporary paddocks. And y'all know sometimes we have to walk them across the street over into the other permanent paddocks. And then we walk them down, and it's a whole row of. Temporary, temporary fencing. Well, they were on the very end. Well, Josie got out early this morning. They're in the old sheep paddock. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Josie got out early this morning, and, and this like life. it was like what nine this morning because I had just finished yes. making muffins and I hey, was Diana. trying to clean up the kitchen. And I was still in my pajamas, and Colby called me. He was like, "You have to get out here right now and help us," because he was in his work clothes and Aiden was out there with us, and I was like. I'm still in my pajamas. <laughs> anyway, so then they put, they ran her back on the other side of the property. They didn't have a lot of fun doing that and put her up in the, uh, the permanent fence. And I was wondering if Ike was going to make his way out because he is a follower and he likes to be with the other cows. And sure enough, I got in the car because I had drove over there because Jennings was asleep. So I wanted him to be right there with me so I drove the car over there got out got about I got a five gallon bucket picked and um the bottom fell out so I ran and jumped in the car I wanted to walk through there was some tomatoes and stuff down that had just they have grown so much they just kind of fell over I wanted to kind of get all that prop back up but the bottom fell out and absolutely drenched me and then me and Aiden had to go run Ike in the rain after hey, that part-time permits how are y'all yeah, we hey Grammy Karen, how are you? Yeah, hey from Kentucky uh, and Michigan. We uh, I was br just bragged on our cows yesterday. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, they our our yearlings and our our small calves have been hanging around in temporary fence, and our big cows are good in it. But our our small ones have done really well in it, and I've been so proud of them. Like <laughs> as hard as how today. as difficult as they are, sometimes I was thinking. My calves are staying in two wire fencing. And I mean, I have some friends who can't even keep cows in fencing. So I bragged on and bragged on them. All of a sudden, I look up and there's two cows out this morning. And I, it just infuriates me. I told Misty I got to quit bragging on animals. Well, I do have to say, <laughs> Ike was in between. Like, he was at the very end of the garden in between those two permanent fences. And he was just eating the grass beside yeah, the thing. I mean, I he, mean didn't, no big deal. he didn't care. It was no uh, ridge life. Hey, ridge life. 
like it wasn't no big deal to him. He was just eating the grass. He just wanted to be up there with them because he went from way where the sheep were and walked all the way up here and was just hanging out. He's, he's always on the other side of the Hey, Rich, so I went and opened up the gate and was going to let him in. And of course, I went beside him and he was doing fine. He knew where to go. But then Elsa ran out. Our computer's like sorry, popping up screens everywhere. I'm trying to. And so anyway, he goes right in, but then Elsa shoots out. Hey, but thankfully, Aiden had, I called Aiden and was like, Ike is out. Hey, just, you, Mike, come what's as, up? just come as my backup just to make sure we get him in. And he did fine, but Elsa ran out. And she wasn't a problem either. She went over. She crossed over. You know, oh, really? they'll come out and yeah. cross over. She followed her same little path. But then I had to walk her back over. What's so crazy, though, is when now, okay, so I get home and realize, okay, now we have to move the calves <laughs> back to where they originally started, which is, okay, we have 12 paddocks. And number one is where they're at. And number 12 is where they're supposed to be. All the okay. way to the end. Well, Josie you can was skip. At number one. I mean, you can skip every one of them. However, if you skip them all, there's no fence. And, and trying to run calves with, that doesn't follow well, can't do that. Well, they, so, they're and, usually following their mama. And temporary, I mean, and when we went but to field, one, two, three, four, five. When we went to the field five, that's where her mama was. <laughs> oh, man. How did that go? I could have killed them all. I could have killed every one of them. Me and Aiden just ran in circles around these cows just to get these Did calves out. Did she go out. try to nurse? Oh, yeah. Did she? So we finally got them all separated and finally got the calves out of there. So it was an eventful afternoon. And, uh, you know, it's funny because I'm not, not going to. Oh, yeah. It's just been flooding. So it's, so it's really muddy. It's out just there too. A pure mud. Hey, we have so. life. Grammy Karen asked how you're doing. I hear there's congratulations in order. Yes. Um, this I is have... our 26th child. <laughs> I have um hey, I have have good life. days and bad days. Thank you for asking. Um this afternoon has been kind of I haven't felt the best in the world. I fixed some spaghetti and some squash casserole and a salad and I got most of that down. And so I feel a little bit better, but if I don't keep something on my stomach, I start getting really nauseated. But you know, it's just just part of it right now. <laughs> But we were shocked. <laughs> I was shocked. Sean, Alaska, I think I've I've got to the point where I think I'm investing in a cattle prod for some hard-headed pigs and calves. Really, my cows are pretty good. Well, I the pigs you know, have done good, I think, now that they know no, where they're wait, supposed to be. Our pink pigs have done good. Actually, it's not our pink pigs that actually Well, like I don't think we've given them an update since we moved on. Um, yeah, because we really, we that won't be on a video. So all long. of our babies having the homestead come and picked up their beautiful babies. And we had another, another couple. couple an hour away. They bought two um, Thank of you, our Karen. purebred American guinea hogs. And they come and picked up their babies. So we knew that it was time to move Peppa back with George so that we he could re-breed re her. A few weeks. And we moved the babies too. And... It was a little nut. The bait, you know what's so to crazy? Say the least, it the was a little piglets nuts. actually did okay. Part time permits, thank Peppa, you for coming on. I know yes. it's hard with children, so <laughs> we, we understand. We've threatened all ours, they're all locked up. <laughs> I actually duct taped to the wall. He's lying. I better not he say that so on YouTube, lying. they'll cut us off. No. <laughs> there, I told them to go to their room and turn on the movie, so then we'll duct tape them to the wall. <laughs> He's lying. <laughs> hey, Brooke. Um, so what were we talking about? <laughs> we were talking about moving. So Peppa freaked out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When we put her babies, her and her babies in with all of the, in the woods. other pigs, she freaked out a little bit. Like, even though the fence was on, oh my gosh, she yeah. tore it down, like, multiple times. I mean, just <laughs> ran over it. What was that again? Did that one time? She one ran over it. <laughs> anyway, um, it, it, was, it was not good. Colby was flipping out. What's up, Daniel? It was, it was not good. I need to yeah. be, I need to send the little uh, drone out there when Colby's doing stuff like that. Y'all, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just some, there's sometimes. Thank that you, Brooke. I, I love my animals, but there's times they it test me. It can get pretty tense. I mean, they just so, test me. I mean, y'all know if y'all have animals and it's not, it, what's so crazy is the animals, the things that upset me the most is not, what's up, Hank? How about you? It's not the animals 
that's already get on your nerves. It's the animals that do really good and know what they're supposed to be doing and then, and then don't. don't do it. Like Allie's notorious she, for that. And, think, and like Peppa is notorious for I that. I think she freaked out because we were putting her, she's been separated on, from them for so long. And then we put her over there with her babies and she's never been with all the other pigs with her babies. And she's never been in that area. So I think it was just, a, hey, Daniel, I didn't see you pop in, but thank you. I think it just kind of freaked her out a little bit. But since they got out, what, 20 times that day? But I don't, they haven't gotten out since. They've she, done um, okay. Even with a storm, we've had, we had a major storm come in. Three Memorial trees day. down, ripped down a piece of barbed wire fence or a, a big chunk of barbed wire fence. Uh, one of our pig nets got hit. Luckily, it was not the but, pig net they were in. Right, but they so, did good. Mama Bear of Seven, what's up? Even, Welcome. even, even with the storm and the limbs and all that that were coming beside them, none of them got out. So I think it she it just freaked her out a little what bit. What was so crazy though is is she's never really been trained to the, the temporary fences. So mm -hmm. we were gonna keep them. Don't thank, thank you. you for I duct need tape. that for more duct tape. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna buy more. <laughs> Oh, so thank you, Dong. That was we cute. um we were gonna put the original plan. You know, you you always have plans and they ever work. Original sometimes plan. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. We were taking the piglets and the pig, uh, American guinea hog mama, to the area next to, next to. Yeah, the that feeder was hog. the original plan. Well, our wonderful um weather we've had has been kind of rainy and not really um, you know. Wasn't really sunny, and so we had a charger that was not doing right. So the kid, that's what we realized. We're like, "How is she getting out?" Well, the charger wasn't hitting like it's supposed to. Yeah, I mean, it was popping them a but little not, bit, not like but not should. enough to put them in their place. So since we had all the pigs over there, that's when we had to put them all together because that was not right. our original plan. But you know, the piglets have been great. The mama, like me, said she kind of freaked out for a little bit. Yeah. She actually got caught in the net, and I'm talking about it was lighting her up. So I think. I mean, I hate that happened, but what I'm saying is that may have But we called, called it her. really quick. Too. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, saw it happen, was, so I went over there. She was in it, but we were able to get a hold of it pretty But quick. what was great is I think that right there said, oh, my gosh, I'm not going next to that fence yeah. anymore. So it's caused her to just completely stay right in the middle of the, of the little pasture. And pad, the babies uh, have done good since then. Yeah, I think yeah. it just took them a little, hey, North Star Prep Stetter. It, I think it just took her a little time to get in there and kind of get settled down. But they're doing yeah. really, really, really good, good right good. now. Really good. But that was the um to be a fly on the wall that day. That was pretty oh, man. funny. And I wasn't able to help. Um, I don't know if I was sick that day. Hey, Supper Seven, how are you? What was going on that day? I've had to take more chill time than I would like. Um, most of y'all know if we're out doing something, if y'all watched our videos, we're typically out. Did you homestead in engraving business and life? Where are you being? I, I don't know. I just wanted to make sure we're we're speaking to people as they come in. We've I didn't been see speaking. That. I've been speaking to everybody. So anyway, I, I'm a. I like to go out. I like to be outside. I like. I like to do. What's up, Ivy Acres? How are you? Do our tours together as a family. If Colby's out doing something, I like to be out there doing it. Very hands on. Go 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 go. We literally just came in like. But well, I didn't. Minutes, it yeah. was another one of those things where I have been extremely exhausted. I like to cook all the meals today, clean up. I would be awesome. Do the laundry. Hey, I'm at like, Walmart. I'm gonna be a Walmart greeter one day. He said I'd be a great greeter. <laughs> so I'm one of those best. That's what we're best. Colby oh. has been working all afternoon, but it's like kind of one yeah. of those things. Michigan Mike where said your son's been working hard. I know. He sorry. is. We wouldn't be able to I mean, do like, it without him. It's uh, he is um, he sometimes he can be like the cows too. I'm like, hey, why do you do this? But then I'm like, man, you've done so much. So he really does a great job. When do you yeah. edit videos? At like three o'clock in the morning, usually. Yeah. No, I, I laugh. We edit usually. I, I don't know. We really don't have a special time of editing. We literally work from. You do from like four a.m. till ten. I mean, like we were well, doing. I'm there doing there some are business. times that Colby will crash early. Yeah, I, there's some days I just I, I can't make it anymore. But like last night, I, I do some consulting on the side, and uh, last night was a late it was a late night. night. It was about eleven o'clock last night. So, but it is what it is. The Max, my first child, I took 
two naps a day <laughs> all night, always so tired. You I'm know, scared to know what our house would look like if Misty took two naps a day. Yeah, our, that's our not an everything. option for me. Yeah. I wish I could lay down. Yeah. Well, uh, let me say this. With hey, Aiden, Stacey, it you? wasn't that big of a deal. Um, even, even I was a nursing school, full-time nursing student. Thank you, and, Fancy Farmer. Um, it was tough, but um, it wasn't that bad. The more that I had, I found myself being more tired in the beginning and at the end, especially at the end. Um, I guess just because I'm carrying so much extra weight and I'm having to keep up with everybody else. Thank Arkansas uh, Woodcutter. So um, I remember with Jennings, which Sayla was several years older and, you know, all the kids were a little bit older. But I would find myself if we were watching a movie or like the kids were playing in the floor coloring or whatever. And I was just sitting in there with them. I would doze. I like just sitting there. I would just doze off. So I find it hardest with the naps in the end. I would. Um, there's days and I know that I know this sounds crazy, but when I take breaks, I, I we I'll run in the mornings after I milk and. Hank said he, they take break from 12 to 5 till it's too hot. And I used Being to. Being down in Florida. Uh, hey, little feet. Couldn't imagine. It's, it's been hot here the last few days. We mm-hmm. went from kind of spring to straight on summer, which is what we used to do. But like when, I, when I'm when i not doing something, I guess I'm OCD. <laughs> I feel like I, I feel like I'm wasting time So because I know we have so much to do. Like tonight before live, that means it's an early night. So we're like running, 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 trying to get everything done. Mm-hmm. And this is one of our big move nights just with our sheep and um of course, trying to get the calves taken care of. We were trying to get the rest of the tomato stock up. So yeah, we had some that have grown have grown just like they went from kind of being in shock to with all the rain and stuff comes in. It's yeah. like they have to be tied up right now. They're laying down on the ground. So I went out and kind of pruned the bottoms and we um, actually could probably go a little higher on the pruning. Prune prune the bottom some and fertilized them and um Colby so. I did that a few days ago, and then Colby went tied them up tonight because they were like literally on the ground. Um, when's about- the baby due? I am due between Christmas and January the first, so it's going to be a fun December. And what's so funny is um, Harley's birthday is the end of November, and Sayla's is the first of January. So we're going to be and there are other ten children or somewhere in between <laughs> somewhere. So it's going to be, it's going to fall between Harley and Sayla's birthday, somewhere between, um, that they're saying uh, December the 28th, but all my dates have been off. Everything's been off. I was totally shocked. Everything about everything has been off. So they're saying December the 28th. I I, I say somewhere between Christmas and the first of the year. So we'll see. We have spent Thanksgiving in the hospital before. With Harley. Yeah. I'd rather not spend Christmas in the hospital. So. Hey, can't predict that. We might be. Never know. Never <laughs> know. Who knows? Hmm. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Are y'all planning on going to HOA this Depending year? Depending on the cows. Um, if we have, we should have one coming out of milk and one expecting a baby. If that's the case, then we probably will because it's for us, it's hard to find a milker. Actually, we're going. And as long as the pregnancy is going. Yeah. As long as everything's going good. So, um, you know, there may be back. Expensive winter. It is. (laughs) Uh, Rehab life's another, uh, baby Mac. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Uh, how hot is it here? Catching up. We had a, we had a, um, we surprised the kids with the game. And, um, well, I had told them. Yes. Ivy acres. I told them before school was even done that this summer we were going to spend some time playing games, painting hey, some Ben, stuff. Dana, Grandma. And so hey, what Mania, I did with you? them is we started our first game and we did a sniff and tail and I blindfolded them all and I passed things like dirty socks, chocolate, pickles, and, and made I them, agree them home sniff there. and then tell us what it is and then each kid got points or whatever and then we went on a scavenger hunt and they got strips of paper um with clues that would lead them to a puzzle piece and the video it's all kind of crazy because they're running around everywhere and Colby's trying to record it and I'm trying to tell them what to do so anyway so they all had strips of paper that was the gist of it and it would give them a clue where they had to figure out where the 
puzzle piece was. So then when everybody found the pieces to the puzzle, they put it together and it said, Santa's not the only one coming this year. Baby McMorris, number six, December Dude, in uh, December. So HOA, they're, they're really shooting cute. for it to happen in rich life. So we will try to go if if cows are permitting. Uh, we always had we had a good time. Are y'all uh, buying a limo? <laughs> Don't give him any ideas. I want to. I want. I'm gonna get one of those uh, those ugly little square Nissan vans. Uh, we laugh. I have. There's a doctor in town that has a. They have six. They have kids. six kids too. So they have this big nasty <laughs> square black bus thing. And I always joke with Misty. I'm like, we're buying that. That's what I we're said. As of right now, my vehicle, <laughs> Aiden and I can sit in the front, and then all the kids are in the back. But if we have to go somewhere as a family, Colby's vehicle will hold everybody. So if I'm just driving, we'll go in, in mine. And then if we all have to go somewhere as a family, then we'll have to go in Colby's. Daniel, so. that's awesome, man. That you meet a lot of good people volunteering. That's that's great. We would love to. It's just it's kind of hard with our children. But um, we enjoyed. Hey, if Rachel and wants to babysit, yeah, we will volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna buy a 15 passenger van. I think that would rock it. Yeah, I mean, when you get to the point where you don't have enough seats, you have to. Hey, Stivers. Hey, Stivers, how are y'all? You Congrats have to on definitely 20, close to 20k. Consider um your next vehicle options but ours are both paid for and we're very thankful for that they're not new we've vehicles. actually not had a vehicle payment in like mm -hmm. five they're, years so we don't want they're older payments. vehicles and hey darlene how are you you know the, hey, but they're life. good vehicles and as long as we don't have to pay for them i told colby we're just going to ride hey, sam how are you man off. so um right now like i said we can fit in mine as just me and the kids if we have to go somewhere we'll have to jump in the one that Colby drives because it it will fit us all. So yeah, it's Greyhound crazy. bus. <laughs> we need a Greyhound bus. <laughs> we thought about rehabbing an old. Uh, there, we there was they a went bus. camping a lot. Well, that would be that would be very convenient. We did. We got rid of old sure. Bessie. We should have kept old Bessie. I guess now because I guess we could have just rode an RV everywhere we went. Well, you know, we're thinking about like when we think about going places. I'm yeah. like. The only thing I can picture in my mind is like, I don't want to go in the bathrooms. So when we would go in places in the camper, you know, bathroom wasn't an issue. But you know, when we go in our vehicle, we have to go in public bathrooms. And we're talking about three little girls. I'm in charge of taking three little girls into a public bathroom. It's nasty. I told we're gonna, we'll buy, what we'll do is just buy a big old bus. Just buy an and old put a, bus. Just paint it and uh, put a compost and toilet in it and go with it for the for the for the week. Oh goodness. We had seven kids and we're given an older fifteen passenger van. What a blessing. Hey, that is awesome. Yeah. That's very awesome. It's it's definitely something as the older these vehicles get, which they're fine right now, like we said, and we don't Oh, an ode on them, and that's the most important thing to us. We do rehab a lot. We do too rehab. We will ha eventually have to reconsider. Night, Daniel. Thank you, what's man. Going on. Thank yeah, you. So, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> you know, they don't make a, a decent looking van, though, or like 15 passenger van or like transit or anything to hold that many kids. I guess it's, it's you, when you're that like that, you're supposed to just have an ugly vehicle. I mean, because they're just not pretty. They're like, it's it gross. It's like a suppository sitting there on the. <laughs> On wheels. I mean, I don't understand it. Just paint like green or something. Anyways, uh, what? So, so let's talk about what we did this week. I mean, it's been like plum heaven. I mean, we've had. You saw the one picture with Eliza, but that was just one picture. That was. That was not. Yeah. We had two more pictures that was before just, that, and I just finished up the tree tonight. So small portion. Yeah, I mean, crazy. I actually amount, have my plum juice. Amount. Simmering down on the stove now for the last bit that he picked this afternoon because I That's do awesome, have darling. a sweet lady that lives a county over and she's going to come help me with. She's one of our uh, watchers. She watches. Yes. She's going to come help me with um, plum jelly tomorrow because I tried to make apple jelly in the past and I love plum too. it didn't sit. So it was more like apple syrup and I don't want to do that again. <laughs> And I followed all the instructions. So um, I, from what I've read, several people comment that plum is, is really, really good. But it's kind of. I love plums. They say it's really good, but it's 
harder to make. I don't, I don't, I don't know why. I mean, I don't know. I've never made any kind of jelly. I tried tinted once, and it was a major. We do freezer jelly, disaster. But we don't do. We have so much like jam. Like yeah, we jam, do like jams and preserves. Jam. So this is a new one on us, but we have so many plums. Like I told Misty, we sold we some. Go away. We sold like a few pounds. And then on top of that, we've ate, uh, I ate uh, like 20 a day. Yeah. And then. We so I have a lot of plum juice right now. Thank you, Banana Grandma. And the last um, batch is on. So she's going to come kind of help me get to that. This is where your bowl is supposed to be. You need it yes, to look like this when you ladle it in. Um, so I don't want to mess up. So. I'm glad that she's going to come help me because she's um, very experienced and that's What's up, what Green I mean. Dream? How are you, man? So I'm excited about that. So, yeah, so we, so we had plums Anna like say about her apple, apple syrup. syrup. It became apple filling. Yeah, yeah. See, that was just, that was my problem. And I don't want to do that again because I had apples that I cored, peeled, Cut up, boiled down, strained off, and went through the whole. I mean, it's work. Later, Sam. Thank it you. It is work. Need more pectin for apple jelly, maybe. I have no idea. I'm not an expert, but I spent hours, hours in the kitchen, and I said, I'm not doing that again. Not doing that again. Where we've so been she's blessed. Come help me. We've been blessed this year because uh, one thing we were hoping for was a great harvest of fruit, and. Our blueberries jamming like that, like they've always had the last three years. But plum, man, one tree has given us so many plums. But this is the first year that it really came in did, with a bang. It did, it did good do it last, last year, year, but, but this year is like, like ten times better. Yeah. And our peaches and apples are jamming too. So but I can't they complain. just hit their full either fifth or sixth year. I, I can't remember. remember. I think we planted on the first year that we moved in, and this. June will be six years. So I don't, I think it was that first. I think they're going on their first, their full six years here, like this summer. And um, that was a very, I, I mean, we count it as a blessing um, because I have never seen a tree loaded like that tree was. I mean, out of everything, the plums just. Our orchard really has amazing. our orchard's jamming this year. We've had a good as young, but it's really doing really well. Mm -hmm. That's one thing we really want. Like we, I just went in the greenhouse a while ago, and our tangerine is looking great. Yeah, I mean our tangerines are looking good. And the pigeon peas. Blessing. Did you see all the pigeon yeah. peas out there? Our pigeon, our pigeon peas are doing phenomenal. <laughs> now those. Are those going to be like hey, a, a pea in the garden where they kind of wear out their time? Or is that like a... It's an established tree. You know, it's a perennial tree. But I it read do that, good but the leaves look different on the ones that I was reading about today. Uh -huh. because All you native uh, like Floridians, a, tell like us a, what you think about pigeon peas. We, we just started growing pigeon peas just because we wanted something. To but it's vining like a... Yeah, it's still like a tree. Like, like a plant. Like a mm -hmm. So I don't know if we just have the different variety or what. You might think we got pigeon peas. We just got some pink eye purple hole. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But it is vining uh, like a yes. runner would. Homestead, uh, Homestead Engraving Life. And, of course, I know how the Homestead's on here, too. Uh, we do very well off our honey. We do very well off our elderberry mm -hmm. syrup, which has a honey-based um, syrup. And... We don't sell bees. Hive and Homestead does. Um, we just keep growing our, our hives, but you can make good money back on, on he bees. Mean, they, he means, well, I guess, with pollination, I'm assuming. Do you think uh, a lot of the success I'm stupid. I'm sorry. Bees? I totally under, did misunderstood that. That was a Mississippi <laughs> moment. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> success does come from our yes. bees. Our blueberries are yes. damning because of our bees. And pollination our cucumbers is a huge thing. Because of our bees. Yes. What's up, VW? He had a blind moment. <laughs> That's Mississippi. <laughs> Sorry. I actually read your uh, comment very literal. Instead, I guess what you're looking for. He's business minded. I have to. I look at everything. <laughs> I look at everything in entrepreneurial way. <laughs> How's the state business going? We love Booming. it. Booming. Yeah, jamming. I, when I make batches, they just they go so fast. I can't. I can't keep up. Hey, I gotta say, I mean, I don't. We don't. We're not the kind. Our goal has always been sustainability, uh, and we were just talking about this a while ago. But we have, we do very well on our farm. Um, 
it, it pays for itself. You know, we it's like we had a lady pick up milk today and, and I mean we really I mean it pays she for itself. She bought a feed bag. She brought us glass and we filled it with the white stuff. She bought a feed <laughs> bag for us in exchange for <laughs> Right now, everybody's saying go back to farm so we can say stuff like that right now, I guess, and get away with it. Well, I'm going to say crazy. she bought a feed bag. <laughs> so mm-hmm. our farm has done really well. Uh, we do really well with our farm yeah. selling. So. And has really become a fan of the white stuff. I mean, Who, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, they're, they're big buyers. Yeah. Um, what's and so they neat? have 10 kids. Hey, what's so cool is we. So they get two gallons at a time. You know, we, I guess with all this going on, people's been so intrigued by our lifestyle, local folks, you know, because we're in a conventional farm area that Triple 13 goes on everything. Uh, you know, everybody hey, has we tomato. Have a Florida couple coming to tour our farm. Yeah, right that's cool. That's right. We do. And I think what's so cool is people are intrigued. Like we did the chicken butcher the other day. And man, we've had the most interest. We have two more chicken butcherings for the year. So we've had more people just say, hey, next time you do it, I want to add. So we keep adding all these folks and it, it makes it fun and, and and it makes it where it's not as bad because you have all these people showing up to learn and ultimately go home with some chicken and whatever else. So Fancy farmer, good. we have said that many a times. It, it is an illicit substance. It's amazing that raw milk is an illicit. Don't get me started. I can't talk about it because I get all I get all crazy. It is about considered it. illegal in Mississippi. <laughs> so we get people up, Chris? How are free you, milk in exchange for they buy our feed bags. So for we the don't experience sell it. to come to the farm, right? Or sometimes we charge them parking fees <laughs> so they can park on our farm and then they take Step free. Five, what's up? There are ways around it. Hey, read Joel's books. They're awesome, awesome books. Huge fans. We are huge Salatin fans. And I saw his new book released today. Oh my gosh, I gotta get it. My favorite book so it's $25, far. $25. It's only $25. Only $25. Mm-hmm. That is kind of high, but I'll still buy it. <laughs> um, if you hadn't watched it, it does have a few explicit words. It's few. But uh his in his interview with uh Joe Rogan the other day was excellent. If you hadn't watched that it's like um, two hours long. Yeah, it's two prepared. hours long. You had to watch it over time, you know. But uh it was a good it was a good good interview. <laughs> Instead of the white powdery stuff, we have white liquid stuff. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. right. <laughs> no, Mississippi's regular is is like that because we had so many conventional dairy farms forever and now the co ops and the government and southern well and some federations have shut down the movement of milk and, and things like that and beef. So therefore now they've shut down every dairy farm. So we don't have a lot of dairy farms like we used Ivy to. Ivy Acres said they just started drinking raw milk. We have a dairy cow that will be ready next year, but they just started. So exciting. That's very We've exciting. We've got a lot of people buying it. So yes. um, we're up to, we have 14 hives right now, VW. Um, we expanded. We actually grew three or four more and then we've lost two or three. We had yeah. one then. um, we had a little swarm. I mean, I, I, we have 13, but or, I mean, excuse me, 15, but the one is really 14. We had one it's it's ginormous swarm leave. Swarmed into three. I mean, it was huge. I, I get so mad. There's Never an oak. seen anything like it there's before an oak, my life. There's an oak But then tree. the rest of them have been very small. I mean, just very small. There's but, a monster I mean, you know, oak tree. It is what it is. That's like stands. The first roots, I mean, the first branch is like 40 foot up. So that monster is coming down because it seems like they always want to swarm to it. And uh, the last two have swarmed to the apple tree and Creek Myrtle. But yeah, and we, this did, one, that's right. yeah. we did get that one back. Yeah, but they like going but to that oak. Little. I can't get and if y'all, we all was, if y'all were able to watch that video, Colby, we, Aiden was walking over that way somewhere. He was like, ah, oh, daddy, there's a swarm of bees right there. So uh, Colby just took it up and they did the marching and everything, but it was very small. And the most of them were like that, except for that one swarm that we lost. But been in the grandma, they've done we've done good splitting and stuff like that, uh, so it kind of weighs itself out. What are you doing? Yeah, that's what my favorite Oh, I can tell you that everything we want to do is illegal. Yes, if you want to read a good book, this is the best book by Joel Salton. You can read it. Everything I want to do is illegal. And, you know, we, we think of Joel Salatin, and I'm giving him endless plugs like he knows us because he doesn't know us. But he anyway, doesn't but, know us. But we're, we're huge fans if, because 
He's packed full of wisdom. And and the crazy thing is, when you read this book, you realize how much crap he's had to deal with with regulation. Yep. And how he, he just stands up to it and somehow gets past it. I mean, like. But he's very smart, y'all. Yeah, he's just crazy. Very analytically crazy. smart, but he's also very. Moved to Arkansas. I mean, Please. he's just. I'm going to East Tennessee if something ever happens. I'm joining Chris up there. <laughs> We Mississippi is good and lax on a lot of things. Actually, like homeschooling is one of the best states to homeschool mm-hmm. in um, and really lax on a lot of other things, religious freedoms and things like that. And they're good on the milk because a lot of times they're not going to touch us, even though. But it just seems like. They just had too much bigger farmers, conventional farm, yeah. push a lot of lobbying at one time and it hadn't changed. We have an awesome agricultural um, ag guy now. Uh, ag- ag- What's his actually title? I don't know. I was ag and commerce guy in Alaska. Raw milk is illegal too, but milk shares are legal, but they're not here. Our cat, what do they call calf share? We can do a calf share or pork share, as in like meat share, but, but you can't do a true milk share. Mm-hmm. People do it all the time, but you're not supposed to, quote unquote. Well, I mean, there are ways around it, though. I mean, we have people that love our raw milk, and we can charge them a parking fee, and they take free milk. Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, there are geek. ways around it. A Jersey Angus Cross is one of the best meats that you can have, as as in simple, if you're going to slaughter it out. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Make sure you have an Angus that's throwing he a low He said they weight. can't buy milk either. What, in Tennessee? Yeah. Scratch that. I guess we're going to Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, a lot of people breed uh, Angus to uh, uh, Jersey. Angus throws usually Angus bulls throw a low birth weight VW's in here. He might can say a little something about that, but uh, it's one of the best meats you can probably eat. It's crossed the Jersey because they get that good Thank Jersey you, meal. Thank you, Je- Jessica, for jumping on over here. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Stivers, for sending yes, me this way. Absolutely. I wish every friend that we had could be closer. The only homestead that's close to us that I would say very close would be the Aldermans. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're just down the road. They're good friends of ours, but. The having um, the homestead yeah, is not that's, really we, far. They they're came up the other day, so it's two, awesome. To I think they're like them. a little over two hours, so yeah. that's not terribly far away. Our area is not a big, but you know, just like there's a couple coming from, like Misty said, you're seeing more and more folks embrace it. Um, there was a couple here when we did chicken processing the other day, and he was really interested. Can't wait to um, do it again. So he's mm-hmm. already signed up for the next butchery. Yes. So I'm like, best and, friends and now. And you know, I think that that's <laughs> great. If y'all didn't see our video, I mean, I if y'all didn't see our pictures that we posted on the chicken butchering, oh, that was tough to get through. I was over sorting the livers and As the hearts. As a pregnant lady, <laughs> it's pretty tough. So anyway, um, if y'all didn't see our picture, what I did on Facebook is I just said, listen, y'all, we're needing some help. Because we there we have stations set up when we do our butchering. We're in Mississippi, Jessica. Yes, and so I put I put it out on Facebook for anybody that wants to come help and learn yeah, learn the process. Too. Yeah, that's right. Mimsy and Deep South. Deep are, South. They're all yeah. pretty south of Mississippi, but still not t- terribly far away from us. Um, and I know we're missing some more that are that are around that two fairy to three hours. Not, is fairy tale closer. There's several in Louisiana, know. several farms, uh, homesteads in Louisiana. Um, but they're they're all about that two, two and a half, three hours away. But the closest is Alderman Farms, of course. Yeah. So anyway, I just put it on Facebook and said, listen, y'all, this is what we're doing. We're going to do a chicken butchering. If you're interested in coming to learn how yes, to do Shana this, yes. um, we will be happy to teach you how to do. And y'all, we were really blown away at the, because the first time was in January and we didn't get anybody. We were basically begging people to come help. <laughs> but this past time after Corona, Corona did it. We had six, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five, five people, five, people. five yeah. people that come and help. And of course we sent them home with I the bird. I didn't see it but we had ladies out there good oh, chicken, like y'all. They were doing amazing. Yeah, we had one girl that like she was raised on dairy farm. She was younger. I know I've known her all my life, but she, she um like she, she did, was like the she gutting awesome. queen. Yes. She just stopped. I was I, thinking, man. Colby showed her exactly <laughs> how to do it and stood with her through several birds to kind of, you know, tell her exactly what to do. 
what what this is supposed to look like, how you're supposed to pull this out, and blah blah blah. And she gutted. And you know, if at y'all, least at least half because you were like, killing, you were yeah. kind of helping with the scald, and you were kind of helping with the ice and the. If y'all butcher chickens, you know it's always good to have that one person that just says, "Hey, I, I'm embraced and I'm going with it." We had two people that really embraced, yeah, processing and butchering. They just couldn't deal with the, the killing, you know, and that's that's a hard part. So yeah. they're like, if you can do that, we'll do this. And man, I was like, but I was shoot, really, yeah. really thrilled that people from our community said, "Hey, I want to learn how to do this." So that really, I think, was a blessing to me because I want to see people do this. Job, I Lazy want C. to teach them how to do it and hey, McLeod. them feel the sense that y'all know what you do when you go out and pick all of your garden and you, you know, come in and process it all or, you know, whatever it comes with a sense of pride. So I was very thrilled that we, we had a response like we did. And one of the guys had such a great time. He came up to Colby after and said, sign me up for the next one. I really enjoyed doing this. I would love to get some more hands-on experience. So, you know, it's good. it goes good when they say that they really enjoyed the butchering. Yeah, because most people are like, sure, we'll be back. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back. So, that was very good. <laughs> I saw Stivers where they said that they had zero help, but they still got it done. That is hard when you have a lot of birds. Hey, we have, we have 35 more birds. I forgot to tell you this. We have 35 more birds coming at the end of June and 25 more birds coming at the end of August. So, uh, we like kale. It's good yeah. for us. So, and plus, in the end of August, we'll be processing our turkeys as well. Yeah. So. And the Cornish cross, we did half and half this time. But the yeah. rangers, I think I'm really excited about. We're going to breed them. Yes. I told Colby, oh, we I was not letting him kill off all of those. I wanted to keep at least a good portion of them um, because I want to raise them up to late so that I can hatch them out. To me, that only makes sense to not to have to buy Cornish Cross every single time. I don't want to buy my birds every time. I want to be able to have birds that I can raise up and kill hey, those birds. It up? just makes sense to me. So that's our plan. Uh, Banana Grandma, she did come to our farms with all in her farm. She was, she said, hardly had a special place in her heart. Oh, oh, look, she does this. They are wonderful people. Yes. Thank you, Banana Grandma. Hey, Blondie, how are you? Yes, from Jackson, not far from us. Hey, one thing about Lexington, though, about Kentucky, when we came to the Cyrus thing, Kentucky, I don't and think we so realized. I don't think we realized how pretty Kentucky was. Kentucky's beautiful. You know, we're we're East, we're Mississippi folk. And we love East Tennessee. So, but when we went up there, that is a beautiful country. Mm-hmm. And even going into Lexington where you see the horse farms and you see the, you know, the black old tobacco farms, I guess you'd call them. But to me, that is, they were always so beautiful, beautiful all through there. And of course, the East Tennessee. And Granny Karen and Stivers um, did such an amazing job with hosting that event. Everything was nice. It was so set up. It was so comfortable. There was so much for the kids to keep them engaged. And when you have a lot of kids, you know, that's important. Hey, Larry, what's up? Everything was just just perfect. It was just perfect. But the state itself is beautiful. (laughs) It's not as beautiful as where your cabin is. (laughs) I have to agree with you there, Grammy Karen. I have to agree with you there. East Tennessee is very special to us. It is very special to us. It was a lot of fun planning. I bet it was very stressful. Absolutely. Um, so on top of the chicken butcher and the plums, what else have we done this week? It's been a crazy eventful week. We moved the um, the uh, sheep to uh, the back, back, back field to uh, the last few days. So that's been an exciting move. A little nerve wracking. So y'all see some video footage on that. But they are literally on the very back side of our property, which is about 36 acres across. And that's kind of scary because that's animals who are, um, <laughs> it's not... Not too dependent on taking care of themselves. Hey, but. speaking of before I forget, Chris, if you would text Colby, um, we're going to be your way. Hey, yeah, we're coming up soon. there. Yes, we're coming up there, so Chris. Text him and let's see about maybe trying to go Getting eat. Getting together. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. I'm glad you reminded that. Well, I meant to tell you earlier, but it all kind of unfolded so fast today. that. That's right. Just send Colby a text. Yeah, I, I tell you, uh, Kentucky was beautiful. What's up, Art of Creation? Kim Winkler. 
it's funny that uh, Mississippi is not on that list. <laughs> it's okay. Trust me. Don't put Mississippi on that list. Stay with the Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, hey, there's some really place, pretty places in Arkansas too, where um, our sweet home school and friends just moved. And yeah, they that take was pretty beautiful pictures. All yeah, the time they were there. in the they're in the foothills of uh, of Arkansas. Yeah, it's real pretty there. Kentucky would be too cold for me. See, you are probably right. I know it's I'm been like somebody. I think Brooke, Brooke asked a while ago, "What what's the temperatures?" It's, it's like ninety. <laughs> yeah, it's been this really, week's been in the nineties. It's been yeah. really. I mean, it's amazing because we had a longer spring than we've ever had. I kept thinking, when are we ever going to be able to wake up to like Sharon, our typical it. summers Embrace here? It. You wake up and it's like 85. You can go swimming like at eight o'clock in the morning or eight o'clock at night. You know, whatever. It's just when it gets hot, it's hot. But that usually starts like in March, April. But we were just able to actually start swimming like within the past two weeks because our mornings and afternoons have been so cool. No problem, Chris. But summer's officially here. Yeah, summer it's is hot. here. It's here. Absolutely. Um, the lambs are doing good. Somebody asked about the sheep a while ago. Yes. Our hair sheep are doing great. Um, I say that and something go wrong. But anyways, they're doing really good. Uh, we have uh, two uh, use and then one. Uh, Ram and then one weather also lazy city. Yeah. Uh, but they are doing really well. Someone asked a while ago. I forgot yeah. To that. We really thought that they were going to die. Um, they were very, very sick. Us too, Steph. Too All of the research that we have done after we kind of figured I out agree. what was hey, going Blondie. on with them, with the barber pole worms. Um, most of the people that we talked to or the things that we read said that when they get that sick, that they're likely not going to recover. But they did. Unfortunately, we had to. We most of y'all know that we did have to treat them with the um, commercial drugs. But it was either that. That's right, Miss Cecilia. That was it was you. either that or they die. You know, they die. So we couldn't see the amount of money that we had already invested in them. Um, just letting them die. So, but they are doing great, y'all. They really so, are. They have recovered really, really well. Let's talk about. I really thought they were going to die. We always talk about gardens this time of year, but let's talk about me. Uh, have y'all checked your local butchers? Are you butchering anything anytime soon? Because ultimately, you know, everybody's taking everything to the butcher and your months out or weeks out. So we, we just talked about chicken butchering. We'll have more going on. I've got one hog that we're going to butcher down in about a month. Uh, he'll be ready. He's probably 200 or so now. And, uh, we've been trying to put some milk to him and, and the other two will probably really be, good. the other two will probably be two and a half, three months away. Yeah, so they're, they're on the smaller little bit side. Yeah. But we have one, and he's awesome, host, Kim. So yeah, so already ordered our pig for the fall. That's awesome. See, we have two steers that we're growing up now. They will be ready probably closer to October, November for the one, and probably January for the other. But um, doing really good. And just restocked, of course, with chicken. But we, one of our local, one of our local um meat markets. We heard today that they're having like major issues trying, meat to get, trying to get They're struggling to get beef. beef. That's crazy. That is crazy. Um, that's great, Kim. Tell us what kind of pigs that you got. Fancy farmer. Gardens are important because it teaches us uh, to work our lands like we believe that we're supposed to. Uh, meat production is a huge thing because we love meat. And so for us, that would be a hard balance. And I'd say our kids would lean towards meat, meat production. So, um, wouldn't you? Mm. Yeah. Harley would probably rather eat steak than broccoli. <laughs> She's sitting right here. <laughs> so I would say probably meat production is is bigger, but just because we've been doing vegetables. What kind for a of long hair time. she do you uh, have? We, we have Katahdin. Katahdin, and we've been pleased with Katahdin because they're breed off the Saint Croix, which is a heritage breed for humid, hot areas, which is which is what we have here. So. Um, the only thing is, I'm trying to, to breed in a hardier sheep. So She's my ram, uh, awesome. Our ram is is done very well. We really, he's been our stud and, and strong. So I'm hoping between him and the older you, that they breed a more hardier breed as they get older. Homesteading Graven said, "We are getting together with extended family in three weeks for big chicken butchering. We are awesome. still limited on how many people can be around. They they can be around together. So 
they hope that they can be together by the end. That's awesome. Um, I don't know that there's any <clears throat> in our family that would just be like, we want to come butcher some chickens with y'all. They're like, oh, that's that's oh, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> We'll just but go we were very thankful that there were some people in the community that not only is it beneficial for us to have the extra hands to work all the stations, but they wanted to come and learn. And so we started off. What we did is we just took one chicken and walked through it, walked through <laughs> step by step. It took so, like 20 minutes on that one chicken to teach. Right. But and it then was after a teaching that, man, thing. It, it was rolled. a teaching. So then we kind of let everybody pick their stations and some people moved around. We had some people that That's didn't awesome, want to move Kim. around. Um, I think everybody, but like one person gutted. So, I mean, Hey, that, that's for somebody who is not born and raised doing this. That's, good, that's like a see. major step for them. And most of y'all know that. And y'all know how intense it can be when you're not used to that. So we were, we were very, hey, very heaven, happy. Hey, Heaven's Gate Street Farm. What's up? Harley Gooded. That's good, Sharon Brasher. There's one good thing about Mississippi. They do have a lot of grass fed farms. If you look them up and I, I heard about one in Pickett Hughes. I imagine the same one. Yeah, she was embracing the fact that she was ready to. She gloved up, and was going after it. it. On out. Going after it. I was like, more power, power to you, sister. I'm gonna rehab just life. We we grow these uh, Yorkshires and American Guinea hogs. Um, yeah. any baby names picked out? We're going with Josephus so far, and we don't know. We don't know. No, we I are think... hoping. Somebody asked earlier if we're hoping to balance it out. We would love to balance it out. Just well, to make sense, but at the same time, we just want to help. To me, child. it would be ideal for Jennings to have a playmate. I mean, you know, because they're going to be like two, two, two and a half five. years apart. Yeah, two and a half years apart, or almost two and a half years apart. And our girls are all together. Aiden's a little bit older, so it would we really be not, It would be boys. ideal for him to have a little boy brother to be close to because they're close in age. <laughs> he said, "Is that the Bible spelling?" I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> that looks good for me. <laughs> so that would be ideal. Um, when I went for my last checkup, I had to go for several checkups in a in in a row because I, like I said, our dates were all off. We were just a lot of things were kind of crazy at first. So I had to go for several checkups just to make sure everything was okay and stuff like that. And um. And when I went last time, she said, well, we'll see you back in a few weeks. And I was like, well, actually, can I just come back when we need to do like our midway scan? Because it's really I mean, it's really hard to just leave everything here and go sit in the clinic for several hours. So we ain't doing it. Yeah. And usually it's like <laughs> a two hour wait. So I was like, well, I would she rather knows. just come back. And our, I, she, she, she delivered. Really well. She's delivered all of my kids. So she, she knows, knows we're crazy. She knows like, I'm not know a, gonna do what you're gonna do. a fan of sitting in the office. Like I skipped a few of my glucose tests. And I mean, anyway, I mean, I just don't like to do all the unnecessary. I mean, whatever. And I'm a nurse, so I can, there's some things that I just kind of can pick up on. Oh, that's sweet, Grammy Karen. Um, But I just told her, I was like, well, <laughs> I would rather see? just come back for that midway scan. And she was like, well, I can't come to your house and make you come. So I'm, go I'm going back at 20 weeks. Um, I'm nine and a half weeks right now. So I'll go back at 20 weeks and we'll do that midway ultrasound just to make sure that the baby's developing properly and, and is measuring well. And um that just everything is developing like it's supposed to be. So we'll, of course, find out what the baby is going to be. I did not find out with Eliza. She was number three. I had Aiden as a boy, Harley second. She was a girl. So on the third one, we did not find out. And that was a lot of fun. But then I didn't like put two and two together that I had to come home with a newborn and nothing was ready. <laughs> So, and two other kids to have to kind of tend to. So I got home and I was in a little bit of a panic because I had no nursery, no clothes in drawers. Um, I was trying to recover, take care of the baby and two other kids. So I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that again. So we will find out what the baby is going to be. And that's going to be in August, um, the 1st of August. 
So I'll go for that. The first, it'll be within that first week or so though. So I'll go back at that 20 week. We'll do the scan, make sure everything's okay with the baby. And then um, we'll find out what it is and then we'll pick a name. So I said all of that to say, we don't have a name, but we'll find out what it is. And then we'll kind of decide from there on names. So, um, I saw a comment. What? Don't skip the glucose test. I had no symptoms and ended up on insulin with my last two. I agree. <laughs> well, I did. Okay, this is quickly. I'm going to try to make this quick. This is what happened with. This is what happened with my first. My Aiden was fine. Harley, I failed my first she one. She fails them. She don't want to go to the hospital and do it. <laughs> I failed my first one. So then you have to do the three hour for a lot of you moms in here. If you first. If you failed your first one, you have to go back and do the three hour. You know what I'm talking about. So I went and done the three hour with her. And then I was so sick, so sick. Like I could Amen. not do Basically. anything. The sticks don't bother me. Finger sticks don't bother me. Needles don't bother me. But doing the three hour, drinking that stuff on an empty stomach and having to sit there. Y'all. Right, sweet Gatorade. It was, it's like, what's that orange drink called? <laughs> like Sun Kids with like 10 cups of sugar. <laughs> and you're putting that, like, she put me on a timer because I was kind of sipping on it. She's like, no, you have to drink that in like, I think it was like two minutes. And it's like a <laughs> bottle of it. And you're putting that on an empty stomach. And y'all, I could not function for the rest of the afternoon. And that's not like me. I'm a get up, go get her. I do, 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 do. And I was sick. Oh, I was so sick. So not only was that one time with Harley, then I did it again with Sayla. I, I mean, not Sayla, Ellie. So with Ellie, I failed my first one. I had to go in and do the three hour. I was sick, sick, sick again. And I said, I'm not doing this again. So I took the test with Sayla. She's number four. And I failed the first one. So I said, I'm not Sorry. doing that three hour again. And she said, well, why not? So I told her and I was like, look, I've already done it with number two, already done it with number three. I passed them and I cannot do that again. So she was like, well, can I at least check your sugar and see, can just do a fast and then kind of see what your sugar is. I was like, I'm fine with that, but I am not doing that three hour test again. Um, so with Jennings, I was just like, I'm not even doing the first. <laughs> I was like, I'm not even doing the first. Fancy tip. farmer. So our, I didn't. I didn't. Our holidays that. are pretty crazy because we have five already, um, and that I'm one of four, and that my sisters, um, one of my sisters has four kids too, and the other two have two each, so it's just one big, massive amount of kids. This will be fourteenth, so. the fourteenth grandbaby on his yeah. side. So it gets a little crazy, a family. I'm together. a little jealous. In fifteen years. Your family holidays and vacations are going to be so fun. They're yeah. pretty crazy now. So, But for just us, I mean, you think, well, you know what's so funny is we we didn't intend on having our kids, I guess, spread out over the years. Aiden is 12. He'll be almost 13. When he is graduating, I'll be starting over <laughs> in kindergarten. <laughs> so when Aiden's a senior, this baby will be in kindergarten. Makes me want to cry. <laughs> Missy, get a personal yeah. glucometer and follow. Check it at home. Just keep an eye on your glucose levels. Well, I did agree with Jennings. She wanted to do another fasting. So um, when I went in that day and told her, I don't want to do the, the glucose test and all that. So at least Ooh. let's do a fasting and check your level and make sure that's fine. And it was perfect. So, um, oh my gosh, Steph T5, 21, then our youngest was born. I would cry my eyes out, I think. <laughs> Look, but God has a reason for everything. And that's what I kept trying to tell myself because I was not prepared for this. And this is a busy Stacey. time for us. And there are times when I feel okay, but there are times where it hits me and I feel so sick. And, um, like I, I just mentally was not prepared for this <laughs> physically. It's kind of tough in the beginning. And, um, Stephanie five, if my wife had, but God gave us this baby for 31 years, she'd make me, she'd retire and make me teach homeschool. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. But God has a reason for it. I mean, 
we weren't expecting it. It was not planned. And uh, we were completely caught off guard. Everything's been off and crazy and nothing has made sense. But we're not in charge of creating life. Um, he is. So he gave us this baby and we're just going to do the best we can. And boom, that's an hour long. We're going to end tonight. Thank you all so much for coming on. It's always fun talking to you all and having a blast with everybody on here. Um, let's see. When we got married, actually, my mom found something that I wrote back when I was 10 years old that said I wanted six kids. She, Grammy Karen said that she had the Egyptian flu and be, and be over in nine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank y'all so very much for coming on tonight. We had a blast talking to you. We always do. Jump over to Chris at Single Dad. Just a phenomenal guy. And he usually You'll starts get right a after great us. word from yeah, him. Yeah, he always does a great devotion. So join him if you haven't, uh, if you're not already going. Thank you all again for coming on. It's a blast talking about everything under the sun for the last week. It's always fun. So, um, other than that, y'all pray for me as I do jelly tomorrow. We're doing jelly I don't tomorrow. I'm gonna mess up again because my plums are very special and I want to <laughs> keep them throughout the year. So it's my favorite thing. All right, what do we say? Happy homesteading, y'all. Happy, Happy homesteading, y'all.